Hello, I'm Aaron, and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. I'm not going to be doing any actual programming in this one, um, but I've had a couple people ask me about my programming environment, what tools I use, and how everything's set up. Um, so I thought I'd run through that. I've mentioned a lot of things along the way, but I've also refined the process as I've been doing these, and so I've gotten to where I, I, I know I, slip, I switch back and forth between tools pretty quickly, and it's probably not always that easy to tell what's going on. So so let's just kind of run through everything here. Um, my operating system is FreeBSD. Uh, that's not really all that relevant. Um, you could use Linux and all the rest of this would be the same basically other than you wouldn't you wouldn't install things quite the same but um, that's just what I happen to use. Um, you know, if you're on Windows or Mac some of these tools may not be available um, but there would be something else that you could use. Um, <clears throat> this is a picture, a, a very blurry picture of my setup when I'm recording. Um, it's very blurry because apparently I don't know how to take a picture of uh, glowing screens. But anyway, the monitor on the right is the one that you generally see that has um, that has my, you know, that, I, that I'm working in. The one on the left is the one that's handling the recording as far as it has um, OBS and uh, the, where the camera shows up and, and where the actual vice emulator is running. Um, so I've got the two monitors and basically everything, that, everything that's being recorded for the screen has to be visible on one of them or it doesn't get picked up. So that's how I have things laid out. Um, my window manager is i3. Um, there again, you could use whatever window manager you like. I just use i3 because it's keyboard driven and it's tiled, meaning you don't have windows overlapping other windows within the same screen. You have windows are tiled, so like like right now this window is filling up this this monitor, this screen, um, and I can I can flip between different windows. I can pull up another window and, the, and it gets tiled in next to this one. Um, that's just the kind of window manager it is. Again, you can use whatever window manager you like. This one just works really well for me with programming because, or, or any kind of administration work, because I never have to take my hands off the keyboard and I can pop around between lots of different, you know, lots of different things just by hitting a couple of keys and uh, saves me a lot of time. Um, Emacs is my editor. That's what I'm editing in here. Um, I use Emacs for all kinds of stuff. I also use VI. I'm not a, an Emacs um, dogmatist or anything, um, but I use Emacs for most projects. I use it for a lot of planning and stuff. I use VI more for just quick edits, but again, you, you can use whatever editor you like. Um, I'm not an IDE guy. A lot of people like to use an IDE for programming. I never have. I'd rather just use an editor to edit the files and then my other tools for, for compiling or assembling or whatever it is I need to do. Um, I've been told that VS, I think it's VS Code, I've been told is a good um, IDE that uh, has an Acme plugin that you can use. So if you like using an IDE, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. And, and if you're on Windows, that may be a better way to go. Um, but I just do my editing in Emacs and for org mode files like this one that we're looking at, I use org mode. Um, it's just an excellent um, mode for planning. It gives you these, it gives you this easy outline system and lots of other stuff. So I use that for all my planning files. I use assembly mode for the assembly files. Um, find one. So that's the mode that's showing up in all these. Um, there isn't a lot of stuff for an for an editor mode to do really in assembly because you don't have as much com compared to a compared to a language like Python or C or something like that. You don't have all the syntax stuff for it to keep track of. You don't have the indentation really. I mean, you could indent stuff more, I guess. But I just don't. I think. And as far as I know, no one does. You just basically have one level of indentation. You have labels, and then you have code, and then you have comments, and that's 
basically it. Um, so I don't suppose it matters a whole lot about the mode. Um, I'm just using the, the default one. Um, and again, if you use a different editor like VI, I'm sure that would work just fine too if that's what you like. Um, and Maggot or Magit, however it's pronounced, is what I use for to interface with Git. It's an Emacs mode that works with Git on the back end to do your um, uh, whatever you call it to, to handle your repositories, commits, and updates and stuff like that. So anytime I'm in a project, any project file like this one, I can hit Control X G, and boom, I'm in Maggot, and I can stage my changes, commit my changes, all that stuff. So it, it just gives you an Emacs interface to get so that you don't have to go out to the command line and, and uh, remember the git commands. Um, and then there's git that I use through Maggot generally. Um, oh, by the way, over here on the right, these are all the FreeBSD ports for these things. So if you are using FreeBSD, it's pretty easy to install, although you probably know about this these things if, if you are. Um, Tmux now in uh, Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. What that means is when I flip over this other window, this is a terminal, this is just X term, and I run Tmux inside it to give me multiple windows within this one terminal. Um, and then I can easily switch back and forth between them. So when I'm when I assemble in this one and then go to this one for the monitor, that's what I'm doing. I'm switching back and forth within Tmux. Um, there's another similar program called the Screen that I think might be a bit more popular. Um, I just happen to like Tmux, so that's what I use. Um, and again, it's all keyboard driven, so I can pop back and forth between the different windows um, without taking my hands off the keyboard. So that's what I use that for. Um, then for assembling, I use the Acme um, cross assembler. Um, there are other 6502 assemblers. Um, I, this is really the only one I'm familiar with. I found it and I liked it, so I've stuck with it. So I can't tell you how it compares necessarily. I can just tell you it works for me. So when I assemble something, that's when I'm that's when I'm typing these Acme commands. When I come to this window and do that, and apparently I've broken something. Anyway, um, I'll fix that later. And there's a link here. There's the link. Or when I commit this file, you can just get the link out of the file. Um, or, just or just search for it. It's the one thing on this list that doesn't have a free BSD port. So you have to download it and install it yourself. Um, RL Wrap is a nice little utility I found that lets you wrap, that you can use to wrap around a Telnet. Um, and if I skip, I'll skip ahead one here. Vice is the emulator. Um, although I have seen there is another emulator that's supposed to do some things better than Vice. It's, um, I forget what it's called now, but it's, um, I've been meaning to try it out, but it's a Java program and, um, that makes me wary of it. But, um, Anyway, I'm using, I've been using Vice for all these, and it'll probably continue, at least for now. Um, in Vice, v Vice has a monitor, and if you go into Vice right here, um, you can say activate monitor. The thing is, that gives you a, I'm not going to do it because it'd screw up my screen here, but um, that pops up a window and you're in the monitor. The only problem with that is the window it pops up has a default font that's pretty tiny, a lot smaller than I need for recording these videos. So it has another option where you can go, let's see, uh, I just recently installed the new Vice 3.3 and the settings work a lot differently, so I'd take a second to figure out where I'm at here. Um, you come into the settings here somewhere I forget where it's at. Uh, here we go. Under machine settings, monitor settings, you can enable the remote monitor. And what that just means is it sets up a monitor you can tell it into on this address right here. So what I do then is in one of my windows, I just do RL wrap 
and I've already done it, so I'm not doing it now, but RORAP Telnet localhost 6510, and that gives me a Telnet into the monitor like I have here, but it wraps it in RLRAP, which um, RLRAP stands for read line wrap, and read line is a program that lets you go back to your previous command. Um, basically saves a history of your commands so you can go back, and that's why I can that's the way I can do this. I can arrow up or control P up and go back through what I've done before so I don't have to keep typing out load SHA256.0 every time. I, that speeds things up quite a bit. So RL wrap is just a handy little utility that I discovered that does that. Um, I mentioned device. Like I said, I upgraded device 3.3. It changed some settings and things, but it still seems to be working great. They did add, apparently, some support for um, more of the 80 column features like interlace but I tried that the other day and it was still really fuzzy so I'm not sure if that's going to be something to um, to toy with anytime soon but right now I've got the 80 column Vice, Vice brings up two windows you've got the 80 column one and the 40 column one all both visible at one time I only have the one here right now um, if I let's see now I guess I don't have the other one up. Yeah. Um, that's weird. So anyway, um, you have the 40 column one and the and the 80 column one, and I just have one visible, whichever one I'm working with at the time, because right now it's actually over on my left monitor. And then the next thing is OBS, which is what I record these videos with. Again, you don't you don't need o the last three things here. You don't need to do the to do the programming. This is just in case anybody's curious how I record these or wants to try it themselves. Um, OBS is the thing that's in the picture again here. It's the thing up here on the upper right hand side of the left hand monitor. Um, it's for recording video. Um, recording well for recording all sorts of inputs. I'm using it to record um, the screen and then other things that I lay on top of the screen. And one of those is the um, one of those is the vice monitor, which I do just by by cropping a section of the left hand monitor. And then the other thing is the the webcam of me, which I do by using Droid Cam. I don't have a an official webcam. Um, I just use my Android phone with Droid Cam installed on it, and what it does is sets up a webcam on your phone. So you point the phone at yourself, and then you go to a certain um, address in your browser, and that pulls up the the video from your phone. And then I just crop that out also in OBS. Um, took a little doing to get all this situated the way you know the way I've got it but now that I do it's all pretty automatic um, the only downside to droid cam is there's about a half second delay um, in the in the video coming from the cam um, and so then the last thing here is FFmpeg which is a video processor um, and I use that to basically shrink the shrink the size of the file um, I also crop out the video of me from the webcam and and cut, well, like, what do I do? <laughs> i got to stop and think how I do it. Um, I crop it out now, so I think I cut a quarter, I cut a half a second off of it, or I tack a quarter, half a second onto it, or something like that. Anyway, I've got a little script that does it, but um, it's, uh, let's see. There it is. Yeah, it cuts a, cuts a half second off the front of it while it's cropping it out. <coughs> Excuse me. So, anyway, as a result, then when it, when it overlays that back over the video, it matches up. It was just, it was kind of annoying that my voice was that far off the video, and so that gets things, gets everything to match up. Um... So those are all the tools. Like I said, the, ma the main things are you need an editor to edit your assembly language file. That's, e that's you know, I'm using Emacs. You could use whatever editor you like. You need an assembler 
I'm using Acme for that. And I would say you need to get into, well, you definitely need an emulator. I'm using Vice. So that's, that's what I'm using there. And I would say you definitely need to get into the monitor. And, you know, you could just, you could just tell Vice to open the monitor and have that in a window, or you can telnet in like I do. And if you telnet in, I would just suggest RL wrap because it makes the telnet experience um, quite a bit nicer. And I definitely recommend Git because that gives you version control of your of your software as you go along. You can roll back if you decide you made a mistake or something. You can roll back to a previous version. Um, you have a commit log of you know, changes as you go along. Although I don't use that as much as as well as I should because I generally wait until the end of each session to do a commit. But um, And I think Maggot or Magit does a good job from within Emacs of handling Git for you. Um, I really I can't recommend org mode enough as far as just for other files like this one for planning files and organizational stuff. It's, it's pretty great. So this is the list of stuff I've settled on over time, um, over the 30 or so videos that I've been, well, I mean, some of the stuff I settled on a long time ago, like FreeBSD and Emacs and that, but um, this is sort of the setup that I've worked out, works for me, um, doing these projects and making these videos. So um, when I switch back and forth, like I said, I, I switch back and forth between things pretty quick because that's kind of the point of why I have it set up this way, because it's fast. Um, so maybe I'll try in the future to mention what I'm doing a little more often, at least at the beginning of the videos, but um, when I'm here, I'm in Emacs, and it, I guess it says that very small at the top. That's for editing, you know, organizing, stuff like that. Then generally I pop over here into the terminal to do the monitor, and that's that's the monitor there, um, where you can look at things, look at your code, disassemble your code, look at memory, all that kind of stuff, and then generally I have another window within that terminal where I do the, um, where I do my assembling. I really don't know why that's failing, because I didn't think I'd changed that since the last time I worked on it. I probably just broke it just now while I was popping around between things, so I'll have to figure that out. But anyway, um, I guess that's it. I think like I say, edit a file, then you get a file that looks like you get a file of assembly language code. You run that through your assembler. Um, the way Acme works, when you assemble SHA256.A, you get an executable that's SHA256. Now, when I first started doing this, I thought, and, and that executable, by the way, is ready to run on a Commodore. Um, or I suppose any 6502 machine. Um, what I used to do then was write that file to a D64, which is the disk format for the Commodore, and then I would have to load that disk into the monitor and then read the file off the disk, and it basically was like four steps. Um, and then I discovered you don't have to do that because you can just go in the monitor and load SHA-256 and just load it directly out of the host file system without going through the, the virtual emulated file system. So you can just load it like that and boom, it's, it's there. So that started saving me a lot of time when I didn't have to tinker around with um, disks anymore. Um, I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to ask um, in the comments or contact me any any which way. But um, that's the setup. So I hope this was interesting, and I thank you for watching.